The driveway was packed with city personnel vehicles. Ambulance, police, coroner. This couldn't be happening. What the hell was going on? She ripped through the line of yellow tape barricading any unwanted visitors outside and shoved her way through the sea of blue shirts and ties. Gold badges and tiny flip notebooks with matching pens flooded the once peaceful home of Redamona Pruitt. But so far, she wasn't to be found. Andrew started sobbing in the corner of the dining room. Frankie seemed to go unnoticed. She ran as quickly as she could to him and grabbed his arm, startling him. He looked at her almost damningly. Andrew, what's going on? Where's Redamona? Frankie asked near panic. She's... Andrew trailed off. Answer me, Andrew! Please! He looked at her with red puffy eyes, like a wounded dog with no owner to crawl back to. Andrew, please! She grabbed his shoulder and shook him violently. He sobbed harder than... She's gone. She's gone. My ready is gone! He choked out between sobs. Andrew... Frankie whispered. What happened to her? He looked at her in fear, almost unknowing of what he could say, or how he could say it. She said too much. She wanted to call you to tell you what to do. Andrew spoke softly. Tell me what, Andrew? Talk to me, please. Frankie begged. She couldn't take it anymore, he said, living with those images all the time. She couldn't take it anymore. He began to sob uncontrollably. My sweet Reddy, I love you. It was the last time she would hear him speak. Andrew was a broken man now without his sweet Redamona. All he would do now is cry. She was his life. Frankie knew that from the moment that she met Andrew. What would become of him now? Excuse me, ma'am, you shouldn't be here, a deep voice boomed behind her. When she turned, a large man in a black police uniform stood there with his hand gently on her elbow, kindly urging her to leave. I, I knew her. She was a friend, Frankie said. Then you must be Frankie Welsh, the officer asked. Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Frankie replied, confused. I'm Officer Moore. Please come with me, Miss Walsh. We have to talk. The officer said as he guided her from Andrew to the porch outside. What's going on? What happened to her? She insisted. The officer took his hand from her elbow and looked at her for a moment. How well did you know Redamona Pruitt, Miss Walsh? He asked her. Not very. We only met once about six years ago. We talked for a few hours about... Um... Some common interests. And I left. She told him hesitantly. He squinted and slug a glove finger across the bridge of his nose before speaking. Pulling a crisp pearl-colored envelope from his jacket pocket. It's addressed to you, he said before handing it to her. Frankie was confused. Shouldn't you keep this for evidence or something? Try to figure out what happened to her? She asked. He looked at her, almost with a mixed expression of sadness and disgust. We don't need an investigation, Miss Walsh. He said quietly, looking down at his feet. He looked back up at her, squinting at the mid-morning sun. Her nephew found her this morning in the bathtub. She had chewed through her own wrists and bled to death last night. He gave her a pitiful look and squeezed her shoulder. I'm sorry, but for whatever reason you came, it's best to just go back home until we're done here. Then, in a few days, come back and see Andrew. Let me make sure he's all right. He paused for a moment then. She was pretty much all that guy had left in the world. The officer nodded and walked past. Frankie clutched the envelope to her chest and stood there with a horrified expression painted on her face. Redamona, killing herself. There had to be some other explanation. Redamona hardly seemed the type to commit suicide. She was a very proud, cheeky, and, and imperious woman. Chewing open her wrists? She could hardly believe it. No, 
She wouldn't believe it. It simply wouldn't have happened. But how did it happen then? Who or what killed Redamona Proet? Certainly not Andrew. He simply loved and adored her too much to bring harm to her. Oh, and Mrs. Welsh. The officer turned back to her after having taken only a few short steps. He removed his cap and scratched his head before continuing. Miss Pruitt had no eyes, he began. He heaved a confused sigh. And Andrew said that he didn't write the letter. We even compared handwriting samples just to be sure. He stopped and scratched his head again. She had no eyes, Mrs. Welsh. How did she write the letter? It wasn't a question he expected an answer to. He handed her a card and sighed heavily. Please call me if you need anything. He just placed his cap back on his balding head and walked away, his expression one of deep pondering. Frankie looked down at the envelope clutched in her hands and furrowed her brow. Something evil was happening here. What would she do now?